Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with Nicholas Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that, uh, that watched last week's episode of the show, um, liked, commented, um, yep, yeah, always uh, appreciated. Uh, and uh, very much appreciated was uh, uh, the orders that uh, some of you guys um, gave me for the uh, uh, various James E.D. bottlings. Seems like the uh, the link would went down um, quite quite well. It seemed to be quite popular. I sold quite a few bottles of that. Um, and um, so yeah, I very much appreciate your support with not just watching the show, but obviously sticking your hand in your pocket and and trusting my judgment um, on. Um, on the various whiskies, so uh, yeah, that's that's really appreciated. Um, just a, 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 a quick mention. Uh, obviously, Wednesday we have the um, uh, the, the whisky tasting evening, and uh, it's you know if you've signed up to it, then then great. I shall see you there. Uh, it's going to be a good one because uh, I've got quite a few people uh, this time for a Zoom one. There seems to be uh, um, a little bit of. Maybe maybe people are being less reticent, shall we say, about using Zoom. Um, so, yeah, a bit more of a budget to play with uh, this month. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be some interesting tasting, uh, interesting whiskies to taste. Um, and like I said, you know, if you still want to, if you want to get involved, then um, we'll obviously be doing one in November. Normally, we tend to do the Christmas one in November, which is 50 quid a head, uh, which gives us a, a nice a nice budget to... Uh, play with some uh, slightly more expensive stuff now again I don't know quite how many people are going to sort of sign up to it but um, you know we can post the samples out to you if you're in the UK international is a, a little bit trickier shall we say um, so you know if you guys want to get involved in this you know the, the more people that get involved obviously the more the more uh, um, you know the, the bigger the budget for the for the, uh, um, the evening and uh, you know the, the more expensive whiskies that uh, we can possibly be tasting so anyway um, like I said so yeah that's November I mean it, details will be up on on the uh, on the website uh, in, in due course, uh, but anyway, so today's episode of the show, um, as you can see, it's uh, we're looking at Ben Romag. Now, this is obviously not the first episode uh, that I've done on Ben Romag. I think I've done um, at least a couple before that, but this is the first time I've had the opportunity to basically taste the entire core range, which is really cool. In in the past, uh, if you look at the the, the previous ones that I've uh, I've done, I've, I've done elements of their their range um and part of the reason for wanting to do a ben romac tasting was is that as you can see from the title page um they have now finished the rollout of the the, the new branding uh, which they kind of started i think tail end of last year um with the with the 10 year old and they've now finally got the entire um, the entire range now in the new packaging and I think it looks quite smart I mean you know um, I don't know what you guys think uh, I think it looks fresh it looks modern um, and um, I, I've, I've always liked Ben Romax you know uh, sort of packaging I suppose um, over the years I mean you know I remember the tins um, then there was the, the gold card boxes with the the script in it and I thought yeah that sounds pretty cool you know a bit cartoony you know um and uh, and then then we have this you know uh, quite quite classic I suppose in sort of you know red and red and white um and quite but quite modern looking as well you know obviously font heavy um but as you well know all, all this packaging and frifery is is sort of fairly inconsequential at the end of the day if your product is god awful really and um well i've never had an issue with with ben romac i mean yeah there was one dodgy dodgy travel retail bottling i tasted many years ago um but aside from that you know i i a rated distillery my, my personal opinion certainly the 10 year old is one of my favorite 10 year olds it's a real go-to as far as i'm concerned uh it's really balanced you get a bit of american oak a bit of sherry a bit of peat you know it and sometimes i mean it, it has varied from time to time over the years sometimes the sherry is a little bit more um noticeable sometimes the peat is a little bit more noticeable um but like i said by by and large the 10 year old is really good value for money good complexity well 
has done. I mean, we'll, we'll find out obviously when I, when I get to taste it. Um, and um, yeah, so like I said, you know, I've been a big fan of Ben Romero for many years. I mean, it's quite bizarre when you think about it um, that it was you know purchased by Gordon McPhail back in '92, I think it was, um, and it took them six years to renovate the distillery. I mean. <laughs> If you, if you bought a distillery now, you'd, you'd have it renovated in six months, not six years. Um, certainly, you know, you, you'd want to get your, your, your money rolling. And, um, I mean, it wasn't until, I can't remember if they actually bought stocks. I assume they obviously bought stocks uh, when uh, when they purchased the distillery. But their first juice of their own uh, didn't run off the stills or wasn't bottled until uh, 2004, I think it was, obviously. The, the, the tradition which yeah, was, was pleasant um, and um, but like I said I mean I've been following Ben Romack now for, for a number of years I'm obviously stocking it and uh, um, like I said this is uh, the first opportunity I've had to do an episode of the show on the entire range well pretty much the entire core range anyway um, so you know we'll we'll really get under the skin of the distillery shall we say so a big thank you to Luke from uh, the, the rep for um, Ben Romack for, the, for indulging me uh, with some samples um, and um, yeah well let's let's take a look at the range. <laughs> Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with the organic. Now, um, the uh, the organic has now been raised ABV wise from 43% to 46%, which is a good thing. Uh, I'd like to see the rest of the range up at 46% for obvious, obvious reasons, but they seem to be happy with bottling at 43%. Anyway, so um, now the organic, uh, I, I like the organic. Um, I suppose they want to sort of talk, it was, I don't know if it was one of the first organic. Uh, certified whiskies, it probably was, uh, I think. Um, uh, but anyway, it's always generally, it's always American oak, and pretty much like this bottling virgin oak, which is a bit odd, it has to be said, if you're wanting to sort of like really emphasize the barley, I would have personally used uh, refill American oak so that you, you're you not getting a great deal of wood character. Um, but obviously it's not, not my bottling, <laughs> uh, and we'll see what it's like. Um, then we're going to move on to the 10 year old. Now the 10, 15 cast strength and the 21, all the same. Um, they are a vatting uh, of first fill bourbon and Oloroso. I'm guessing there's probably e either as you get up the, the age scale, probably a little bit more first fill Oloroso to refill uh, Oloroso casks, I would imagine, and probably um, the percentage of sherry slightly differs, but um, I don't know the exact percentage um, of the 10 year old, but I would guess that like a lot of distilleries, their 10 year old tends to sort of be predominantly American oak with a little bit of sherry. Um, and like I said, the sherry has been in the 10 year old over time, sometimes a little bit more prevalent than others, you know. Uh, then we're going to move on to the car strength. Now, um, it used to carry an age statement, but now it's just the 2009 cast strength. I believe it's a 10 year old uh, as this was bottled this year. Uh, and this is batch number four uh, and is bottled at 57.2%. Uh, then we're going to move on to the 15 year old, which is bottled at 43%, followed by the brand spanking new 21 year old. Um, which is bottled at 43%. Now, I, I would have thought that the 21 would have probably been ideal to bottle at 46%. Um, I mean, I can't rem remember what it's retailing for, but, you know, an extra 3% ABV makes very little difference, I suppose, if you're sort of like, if it's 125 quid or whether it's 135 quid for that kind of aged whiskey doesn't really matter at the end of the day um but anyway we we will see what it's like maybe 43 is is just about is right for it obviously uh the, the distillery seemed to think so and we're going to finish off on peat smoke um this is 10 years old uh distilled in 2009 bottled this year uh bottled at 46 percent peated to 42 parts per million now i think that's a bit heavy my own personal opinion. I remember when the peat smoke was first released, and 
it was very light on the peating levels. I mean, I would guess that there was it wasn't peated to anything more than about 20 parts per million, probably less than that. And to me, typical ideal peated space side. Over the years, the peating level has crept up and up and up, and it's now, or certainly was when I last tasted it, pretty much an Isla clone. And um, personally, I thought that kind of defeated the whole object of having a peated spay. When your peating level is so high that you're starting to get the saltiness and uh, that kind of character coming through, and you, I can see why it's done. People love peat. I mean, you know. So yes, get a get a nice big peaty monster in in your uh, in your portfolio. Understandable, completely understand it. But for me, it's. Like I said, if it's going to be a peated spay, I'd rather it be a little bit more subtle, shall we say, and less trying to be something um, like an Isla clone. But anyway, we I am prejudging this particular bottling, which I shouldn't do, um, so we will get there in due course. Anyway, um, I think that's enough uh, enough waffle. Let's uh, let's taste some whiskey. Anyone could open up my heart. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the organic. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's pretty oaky, um, which is probably not a surprise. Lots of vanilla, lots of um, wood shavings, tasty oak. I mean, it, it's it's been a while since I've tasted this bottling and I, I certainly don't remember it being quite so overtly oaky. Um, it's a little bit of barley, there's a little bit of citrus. I mean, it's I mean, it's, it's a pleasant nose. It's, it, it's an, a lovely nose. It's creamy. There's a lot of oak. And, you know, it's a sort of, it's a crowd-pleasing nose at the end of the day. Um, but it is very, very oaky. And it does sort of like say, well, what is the point, you know? Um, all right, if the point is to produce a nice whiskey, then, well, job done. If the point is to sort of say, look, organic barley is slightly different in characteristic, um, to non-organic barley then well you know you, you it's lost out you know because it's just oak at the end of the well it's not totally oak but it's too oaky to really sort of say well I'm getting 2R or all that kind of uh, sort of thing um, and I don't know I don't certainly don't remember sort of you know Ben Romack being all about Toir, I mean that was obviously Mark Rainier and <laughs> that actually quite leads me uh, nicely into um, next week's uh, episode of the show. Um, won't say anymore. Um, but anyway, so coming back to uh, to the uh, the organic, yep, yeah, it's a pleasant nose. It's it's enjoyable. I've got no issue with that whatsoever. Um, it's just a bit like their origins range. Do you remember that? I mean, this was supposed to be subtle tweaks to the range to see where, you know, what difference it makes. Subtle tweaks, my ass. I mean, you know, it was like different strains of barley, pork casks, different peating levels. It was like subtle. No, <laughs> you know, they could have done so much with it, you know, and, and you know, disappeared after about what four, five batches, I think. Anyway, um, so yeah, pleasant nose. Let's see what it passes like. Certainly upping the ABV to 46% cleanses the palate. It sort of like, it sort of, the oak starts to get going and then the alcohol just goes, no. <laughs> and and you get this lovely barley aftertaste um, with a sort of like, a, a little kind of background sort of creaminess, it has to be said. Um, it does shorten it a little bit. Um, and, you know, the, the, the intensity is kind of short and sharp, if you see what I mean, you know. Um, but it's still, it's a pleasant whiskey, um, and it's not overly expensive from memory, and, um, if you like lots of virgin oak and a bit of barley, then there you go, that's, uh, the, the whiskey for you. Here, you right, okay, so let's move on to the ten-year-old, let's see uh, what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's nice nose. Uh, it's um, 
little bit more heavier on the sherry than I than than previous uh, bottlings, I think. Um, and like I said, you know, it does tend to sort of I wouldn't say chop and change. That's you know, you're always going to get you know uh, a little bit of you know batch variation from time to time, but. On the whole, I think this is really quite impressive. Um, it's quite noticeably peaty as well. Again, you know, I, I have had bottles in the past where where it's been less peated, and um, but there's quite quite a sort of tarry, earthy, slightly rubbery kind of peatiness to it. It's not again, I'm not getting a, any real saltiness. So it's it's got that mainland dry. But slightly rubbery, oily uh, peat character. So maybe the peat from uh, that was used to, to malt this particular barley came from you know further down, as we know that you know the peat layers. Um, you know, the deeper you get, you cut your peat, the more oily the peat tends to be. So um, that's a possibility, I suppose. But but again, coming back to I, I think the balance on the nose is really good. Um, Yes, it's a little bit more moved to the dark side in this particular bottling, but but we're not talking one-dimensional sherry monster here. We're talking we're talking balance. Um, there's a little bit of American oak, um, but like I said, it, it is a, quite a bit about the sherry, um, dark chocolate, some fig, walnut, that kind of thing. Um, but again, we're not talking heavy heavy sherry it's noticeable but you know i think there's enough balance there um from the american oak sort of pass on the palate is a lot better balanced um kicks off with the slightly toasty American oak barley and then the sherry moves in just on the edges and, and um, you know you get a little bit of tar a little bit of treacle a little bit of earthy peat um, dried fruit lovely length a um, little edginess I suppose to 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 the sherry as an it's not your Macallan sort of Dalmore polished sherry. There is a little bit of an edge there, but not too much. Um, and yeah, I I like that. I mean, that's you know, if I want a little bit of sherry, and uh, then that to me is absolutely perfect. You know, it's not overwhelming. Um, it's got a good balance. It's got a good length. There's a bit of an edge to it. Um, and all told, I think it's a damn good whiskey. Right, on to car strength. Uh, so let's see what uh, the uh, nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now that's interesting because now in the past I remember the car strength tended to be more heavier on the sherry and I s assumed that um, the balance of uh, sherry cast to uh, bourbon cast was slightly different to the 10 year old. But this, this is showing a lot more American oak character. You know, I'm getting lovely sort of apricot apple slightly less peat but you know again um sort of quite quite dry quite earthy and subtle dried you know sherry notes you know prune raisin a little bit of walnut bit of dunnage bit of earth it's that's a lovely nose that really is impressive i mean it kind of this is what the 10 year old at its best and I'm not saying that you know that that particular bottling of, of 10 year old isn't the best one that I've come across uh, but you know this is this is the the, the, the nads as they say for balance wise um, let's see what that's on Even though it's 57%, that is really dangerously drinkable. Um, that alcohol is really well contained. Um, 
again, palate very much like the nose. Kicks off with the American oak. Um, it's less creamy, um, so it's, it's got a sort of like an edginess to it. Um, there's a lovely barley character. Um, again, the peat isn't too heavy. Uh, it's a you know, light, tarry peatiness on, on the mid palate. Sherry sort of starts to move in towards the back end. You're getting the dried fruit, the walnut, the prune, the raisin. Um, but it's certainly a lot more um, angled towards the American oak than the sherry. And, and uh, stunning, stunning balance. Really, really good. Um, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and see what that does to it. Um, it certainly emphasises the, the American oak. Um, there's a, a slight soapiness to it now, I will say. Um, and, you know, there's a little sugary, watery kind of note, but... So, pass on. Sweeter on the palate now. Um, a little more of the sort of the, the dried sherry fruits. Um, a little bit of granulated sugar. Um, I think personally, um, I would quite happily drink that neat. I'm not quite so sure that um, it's taking water particularly well. Um, it's not kind of like completely falling apart, obviously. Um, but I think I would stick uh, stick to that knee. I think. Okay, so let's move on to the 15-year-old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Mmm, that's nice. Um, again, really nicely balanced. Um, I'm getting some lovely mature American oak, some dustiness. Um, you yeah, know, that sort of sawdusty kind of note it's a slight sort of cognac -y kind of uh, dried fruit character the sort of sherry is kind of moving in that kind of direction um, a little bit of pepper cinnamon subtle peat very subtle just in just a background note of peat and it just it would seem to indicate to me that they have been upping their peating levels. I mean, yes, I know that the peated malts do tend to sort of like lose a peat intensity over the period of time, but it also would seem to imply um, that they weren't using as heavily peated barley 15 years ago as they are now, which I guess makes sense. Um, a little bit of coffee, treacle. Yeah, that's a lovely nose. That really is a lovely nose. It has to be said. I mean, I mean, what's it retailing for? You know, sixty odd quid, which is about par for the course for a fifteen-year-old whiskey at the moment. And um, you know, that is that's that's lovely. Really nice. Let's see what the palate's on. It's soft, it's quite citric, a little bit more sherry on the palate, sort of like the, the sherry dried fruits are a little bit more noticeable. Um, touch of barley, there's an edginess, there's a touch of green nuts, um, walnut shell. It's got a pleasant length. Again, it has that sort of slight cognac -y kind of uh, uh, character going on. Um, it's very easy going. There's a nice uh, spicy aftertaste. It's, it's got a great length, it has to be said. Maybe 46% would just push those spices up a little bit more um, and just give it that little bit more intensity. Maybe they they want it to be a little bit more laid back because, you know, you give it an extra 3% and it will increase the intensity of it and it will sort of, you know, give it more of that... Um, 
certainly there'll be more of a mouth-watering kind of finish uh, whereas at the moment it's it kind of almost kind of meanders um, so okay I can I can live with it at 43 you know it's it's pleasant uh, it's certainly worth the money there's no blemishes there it's you know well balanced um, yeah nice whiskey So let's move on to the 21. Let's see what those goods are on this end, shall we? A lot more um, sherry influence on the nose. Um, really mature. Um, raisinated fruits, green nuts, leather, walnut, oxidised apple. Oh, I mean, that's got a wonderful depth. Um, again, slightly cognac-esque. Um, touch of almost marmalade, um, some cinnamon, touch of bark, not a great deal of peat, it's just a, almost like an echo of peat, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much all about the, the mature sherry, and, um, and like I said, moving in that sort of cognac -y kind of way, and, you know, it is, it's an impressive nose. Again, it's quite laid back and quite subtle and, and maybe if this was bottled at 46% that might just sort of like, you know, just increase the spiciness of the uh, uh, a, a tad and just give it a little bit, a little bit more of, a, of an attack possibly. But, you know, it's mellow. It's pleasant. I, you know, you could quite, quite happily see myself drinking this after, after dinner. Um, See what passes. Lovely, elegant, delicate, but it's got some robustness to it. Does open up with the American oak showing first, a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of dusty American oak. Sherry sort of moves through nicely on, on the mid palate, dried fruits, um, leather, walnut, little bit of chocolate on the finish, lovely length again. We're sort of almost cognac y kind of um, dried fruit notes, a um, little bit of spice, a little bit of chocolate on the aftertaste. Absolutely gorgeous, lovely. Again, maybe if it had been bottled at 46%, you might have just had that little bit more intensity, a little bit more, a little bit more emphasis on the spice. But I'm guessing that, that obviously this is, but Ben Romack didn't want to go down that route, and well, that's fine, isn't it? At the end of the day, um, certainly, you know, when you think about creating a whiskey, it's, you, you're not only thinking about sort of like you know the the uh, the, the production process, you know, you're thinking about, you know, the, the interaction with the wood and, you know, how it works at what particular ABV, you know, it's not always a case of, well, we'll bottle it at 40% because the duty is cheaper and we're keeping the cost down, you know, a lot of um, master blenders are, 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 have obviously a plan for whatever the, the particular bottling is and, you know, um, they obviously know that by you know increasing the alcohol content will increase certain elements of the whiskey that they may not actually want to increase. So it's it's all about a balancing act at the end of the day. And um, you, you know what I, I mean? I like that. I think that's that's an absolutely gorgeous whiskey. Like I said, it's really laid back. It's really mellow. Um, yeah. It's a big Right, okay, and finishing off with a bit of peat, which is always a, always a fun thing to do. So uh, let's see what uh, the peat smoke gives us then, shall we? That's pretty young, actually. It's got that kind of Ockentosh and strawberry moussey sort of kind of character happening. Um, there's a little bit of a faintiness to it. Um, it's quite briny. There's a lot of peat. Like I said, it doesn't really say peated space eye to me. It's kind of a bit 
it's a bit odd actually it has to be said like I said it's got that sort of Ockmintosh and thing going on it's, it's kind of like um, almost kind of Ardmore-y I suppose you know I mean I've come across bottlings of Ardmore that tend to sort of have that sort of rosy sort of um, Turkish delighty kind of character um, I mean you know there's a bit of barley there there's a bit of sort of malt biscuits um, uh, but it's kind of it's intense you know I mean you can't argue about that it's kind of there and pretty much in your face um, it's a bit I wouldn't say rough and ready because that's really the wrong impression it is a bit kind of and I wouldn't quite say it goes far as saying it's a bit all over the place although it is a little bit all over the place um, it's entertaining <laughs> is what it is it's it's fun um it's you know yeah but it's it's not really a peter spade it's kind of i don't know, quite know where it's gone now to be to be bluntly honest with you but anyway let's see what the past like I think the palette is a little bit more conventional. I mean, yes, it does have that slight tosh and strawberry mousse note, um, but it's got a lovely intensity. It's gritty uh, American oak and um, gritty peat. Not maybe not quite so salty, not quite so sort of um, islery. Um, it's a little drier, I would say. There's a, a little bit of creosote and a bit of tar, but again, it is very very heavy on the peat I mean um, and well there you go it's that it is what it is at the, at the end of the day and you know, quality wise not got a problem with it um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of fun um, so yeah there you have it that's the the peat smoke less less smoke than I remember it from previous bottlings though so. Right, okay, so uh, let's sum today's episode of the show up. Like I said, big thank you to Luke and to Ben Ramick Distillery for the samples for today's episode of the show. Hopefully, um, you don't think I've done them too much of a disservice. Um, so, uh, the organic, yeah, okay. Um, taken as, you know, as, as a whiskey. <laughs> it is, it's a pleasant whiskey. It's, uh, whether, whether, whether you think that um, it works from a sort of like a, a technical point of view, I suppose, is, is open to debate. But uh, as a standalone kind of product, yeah, it's, it's, it's pleasant. Lots of oak. Um, and, you know, if you like that kind of, kind of style, then, well, you know, it's, it's not a bad whiskey. Um, the 10-year-old, I still really think is kind of like Ben Romack's strength. Um, and uh, I... Although this particular bottling, certainly on the nose, seemed to sort of like display a little bit more sherry character um, and a little bit heavier peat than I remember, I still think it's a really well balanced whiskey. Um, the ten-year-old car strength, like I said, I thought that was really impressive. Um, it's it just reminded me of how some of the standard ten-year-olds had been in the past a little bit more American oak subtler sherry notes um, subtler peat notes as well and you know I I got no issue with that whatsoever I think uh, uh, like I said it it was quite a surprise because I remember the the cast strength bottlings you know they'll hundred proof and uh, and the earlier batches of, of this particular um, cast strength bottling tended to be more heavier on the sherry that more bourbony accented and a subtler sherry note so absolutely up my street as they say 15 year old yeah really really gorgeous um has that sort of slight cognac -y kind of character going on good price good balance again you know good whiskey um 21 year old you know May, me personally I would like to have seen that at 46% I would like to have had that sort of slight uh, more intensity a little, maybe that would have given us a little bit more spiciness but you know really laid back elegant um, and not bad whiskey at all um, peat smoke um, yeah bit of fun um, 
uh, it, like I said, it's not really my idea of a peated spay. I personally believe that you should keep the peaking level, you know, a lot lower and, you know, just, just add an element of peat. So it's, you know, more about, again, the barley and the character and all that sort of thing. But again, I can see the point of these kind of whiskies because, you know, people love the islands. So, you know, distilleries are going to go, ah, let's get a, get a, a big peat, peaty whiskey in our, in our lineup and um, that's pretty at the end of the day so anyway um overall i really love ben romack um and you know if you've not tasted it and i'm pretty certain it's it's available worldwide uh if you've never tasted it get hold of a bottle of the 10 year old because i know you will not be disappointed so anyway um until next week uh all that's left to say is um good afternoon and good granny Side of